The Super Speedway Podcast is a Dream Bigger Media production. For news, photos, show notes, and information about advertising on the podcast, visit www.thesuperspeedway.com. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Super Speedway. Where do you see yourself on this list by the time your driving career is over? The top. It's pretty simple. As far as where we're at right now, though, I mean, Tony's a, Tony's a great friend of mine and, um, you know, really one of the guys that I kind of looked up to coming up through. Tony was, uh, you know, a great teammate, great friend, and, uh, and still is. So, you know, it's pretty cool to tie him. and certainly means a lot to keep kind of climbing the ladder and getting to the next bunch of guys. And, and eclipsing that 50 is going to be pretty special. Welcome to episode 71 of the Super Speedway podcast, recorded August 1st, 2018. I'm your host, Eric Young. I'm joined by my co-host, as always, James Cush. James, I told you that I didn't use a certain clip in the intro, but I forgot to warn you about the uh, the Tony Stewart mention in the in the clip. So I liked it. That's great. <laughs> Kyle yeah, Busch talking in the can... yeah talking in the post race press conference about uh, matching Tony Stewart's win record in the Cup Series. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's uh, every time we can sneak a sneak a mention of smoke in the podcast. You know, I'm you know how to get me fired up. So that's good. <laughs> there you go. So I guess we'll get right into it. Kyle Busch uh, gets the win at Pocono, uh, gets his 49th Cup Series victory and ties Tony Stewart on the all time win list. Um, I don't know what number that is on the all time li- win list. James, what is it? I know, you know. Thir- yeah, 13. 13. They're, uh, OK, yeah, they're tied for 13th now. That's Pretty amazing, and and I, I was hearing a stat, too. Um, he also matched uh, Ron Hornaday in the truck series with his win on Saturday, and that he's he's won all of his races in the truck series before he's as old as Ron Hornaday was when Ron Hornaday started in the truck series. So that's kind of interesting. That is interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, he's really getting close to that special number that, yeah. uh, that only Richard Petty has – uh, you know, achieved. So, yep. um, yeah, he's, a, he's about to get there. That's yeah. Pretty crazy. Nick Bromberg is going to be excited when he hits 200. That's, that's yeah. a big deal for Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nick's been riling everybody up with that 200 number for a while. Every time Kyle wins a race, yeah. he likes to throw that 200 number out there. Yeah. Course, I'm with Nick. I'm with Nick on the whole thing, but I'm, it's, it's still, an impressive stat, but it doesn't mean what it's it not, meant to have Richard do it. Yeah. It's not Richard Petty's 200. This is just a, this is a math equation to get the 200, right. in my opinion. And I was listening today. I think it, it was on Sirius. I don't remember whose show it was. I think it was during uh, during the afternoon show with Chocolate Myers, and I forget who was filling in. I, I don't think Noble was there. Um, but they were talking about the fact that the cars that Kyle's running, maybe it was maybe it was yesterday. I don't know. Anyway, they were talking about the fact that the, the trucks that Kyle's running in the truck series – I mean, it's not a comparison. He's he's basically padding stats in the truck series. Um, yep. You know, he's he wins more than he doesn't win, and it's not to the level of what you know, say Hornaday did back in the day when he was battling with those guys to to get those yeah. wins to get yeah. to the number he's, a, he's at. So. It's, it's a compile. He's basically a compiler without yeah. not not trying to be, um, not trying to be like. Negative. Or well, anything. no, it's not I, minimizing anything. No, he's got. No. I mean, it's his team. He's got better equipment. He's a he's a great driver. I mean, it, it it's certainly. I'm not trying to to say anything bad about Kyle Busch. I mean, obviously, how many times does his truck win when he's not driving his truck? Sure. You know, so and he's and he gets mad about it. Right, and it's it's not it's not bad that he has good equipment. It's just it's it comparing it apples to oranges. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. Um. I did a quick re- did just a quick search on the Google machine to uh, to see where Kyle Busch is officially on the all time uh, win list. So he yes, he is 13th, tied okay. with Smoke. Um, but here's an interesting uh, couple of names that he's probably going to pass this year. Um, his next win, he ties Ned Jarrett and Junior Johnson. Okay. And right uh, behind or right ahead of those guys at 54 wins is Lee Petty. And then Rusty Wallace is at 55. So Kyle Busch, if he keeps up this pace this year, he could technically probably get past Lee Petty and up to, to uh, Rusty Wallace. Hmm. And after he gets to Rusty, there's a big name on the list that, uh, that he's climbing up next. Yeah. But he's got a long way to get there and that's Dale Earnhardt, 76 wins. Right. So he's going to get there eventually. It's going to take him a little while, but yeah, he's he's going to make a big leap here in the next uh, 
with his next few wins. Kyle, uh, Kevin Harvick's not that far behind him either. He's he's charging up the ranks too. Yeah, you keep having seasons like they're having right now. They're going to get there faster <laughs> than you know it. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So speaking of, of Kevin Harvick, uh, you got here in the notes that Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick keep trading shots at the top, and that's what happened this weekend. Um, Harvick had the car to win. I mean, he had the best yeah. car, but yeah. had some trouble on pit road. Uh, got together with Eric Almirola. That put him back, and, and just things, a lot of it stemming from where he had to start due to the the um, penalty, the post-race or post-qualifying penalty, having to start at the back. Um, just it seems like Harvick's pretty much there until they beat themselves. Yeah. And that's the same thing with Kyle Busch though. That's true. That's the thing though. The, and that's the reason you have the, the three guys at the top this year is they are so flawless that. So who's going to beat themselves at Homestead? That's the interesting thing. Cause they're not, can all three of them be perfect at Homestead? First of all, if they all make it to Homestead. Right. But man, I, I hope I, this is so on. much fun. I I just I, know. I, I love don't it. get the people that are hating on this. This is fun. If you're yeah, gonna have like somebody dominate, have let's have three guys do it. This this season has turned into a prize fight. Yeah, and so I don't care about the rest of the field. Let's no. let let's let the best duke it out. We've got Frazier and Ali, what? and we're going thirty six rounds. It's, and it's cool gonna culminate. You get that bonus every now and then when somebody else sneaks a win, and that's not those top three. Right. You know, so when that happens, that's something exciting. We could see it this weekend. Um, but then again, Truex is going for another win on a road course. He's won right? he's won three so far or two so far. He's going for his third. He's, yes, he no, he's won yes, he's going for his third. Third in he's a row. He's won the last yep, he won Watkins Gun last year and right. Sonoma this year, so he's going for three. So but we'll we'll hit on that. I guess we can talk about uh Watkins Gun a little bit. Let's keep talking about Yeah, we'll first. get there. We'll get there. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We got all kinds of stuff to talk about. So <laughs> Right. Um, so I watched most of the Pocono race. I did not get a chance to watch the Xfinity race at Iowa, although I heard that was, oh, that was good. fun. Yeah. Um, I caught the, uh, I caught the last little bit of the Xfinity race and, uh, that was, that was a lot of fun. I, I heard there was a good battle to finish until, uh, Christopher Bell, man. Woo. <laughs> tell you what, man, it's going to be you hard think... to keep him in that series too long. Oh, and he's, he's already got the itch. I don't know if you saw on Twitter today, but he did a, they did a conference call with him and Joe Gibbs and Joe said, yeah, he, he were bringing him back in Xfinity next year. And, Bell said, I don't want to waste my time. Huh. <laughs> and that was just, I thought I was like, woo. He's intense, oh. man. I he was I was there at Kentucky when he won there. And he wasn't you know, a lot of those guys come in and they're all happy go lucky and having a good time when they come in to win the race. He's intense. He yeah, was he, he was ready to go out and win another one. He, he could have lost so just really quickly, uh he could have lost that race on one of the last two restarts and uh Justin Allgaier really really nailed him. And um, the second, the last, re, the the last restart, he just took it back, like mm. muscled his way past all, um, uh, Justin Allgaier. It was fan, just a great battle, good old short track racing. So, nice. and nice. we'll go back to Pocono. And with that, we go back to Pocono. <laughs> back to Pocono. <laughs> Although Pocono didn't seem like it was a bad race either. Um, it was interesting to see those guys come from the back. Harvick was able to speed through the field pretty quick yep. um, from the start, but obviously the the pit stall didn't help him out very much throughout the race. Yes. Um, which I mean, I'm I'm good with that. I don't mind those guys having some issues. I like seeing some seeing them have some challenges. Yep. Um, Harvick was able to battle back to fourth place for the finish. Kyle Busch gets the win. Daniel Suarez, man, right there. If Kyle Busch wouldn't have been in that race, Suarez would have won it. Yeah, and he's there. Had yep. Eric Jones not died to the inside of him going into turn one in the last restart, he might have been able to give Kyle a run at the end. Yeah, as well. Kyle said Kyle said as much. He he was pretty pumped of uh, on Suarez. So yeah. uh, maybe that 19 car is hitting on something here. That that 19 car is going to get a win this year. Yet I still think it's going to happen. It's tough yeah. because he's got those three guys that keep taking the taking the top spot on the podium. But yeah. he's right there. And Alex Bowman had a good showing too in third well, place. Well, Rick Hendrick, the yeah. whole team, yeah, really good. The only one that had a problem was uh, Johnson. Late, he kind of did a little bit of a backslide, but they were all tracking top ten. Yes, they uh, were. during they, the race. Really good day for those. Really good day for them. Really good day for Chevrolet. Um, yeah, all around. Kyle I think, Larson not to be found in the top ten right. or the top fifteen <laughs> or the top twenty. Doesn't he struggle there though? I feel like yeah, he, he says struggled he's there not before. good there. But whenever you see the Chevys in the top ten, you're usually right. you've got Larson in there, and just to see all those Chevys beat Larson is just kind of a shocker. Yeah, I think Chevy's going to turn a corner here. Chase Elliott got a stage win. Yep. Another one, two weeks yep. in a row. So Hendrick Motorsports starting to make a little bit of a rumble here. Watch those guys. Is... That they, they All they need is a win. 
they get a win, yep. they're gonna they're gonna be right there again. And yep. the way this playoff system is, is set up, you know, it's really easy to say we got a big three, and those are the three that are gonna battle it out. But anything yeah, can change at any yep. time. Yep. We. I mean, we. If you watch other sports and you watch hockey and baseball, if somebody gets hot. Yep. Tony Stewart's a great example. 2011. Yep. He had no business being there, said as much, and went into the first race of the playoffs, and it was on. Yep. And I argued with a guy on Twitter this week about it, and I the, I like the fact that under the old system, back in the day, it didn't ma- if you got hot at the end of the year, it didn't matter because you were it already matters, out right. of it. Right. I like the fact that it matters now. I like the fact yeah. that you have to stay good all year, and it's not going to. great. Yeah, great part of the playoff structure. Yep. I mean, that's something that we've gotten – um, you know, Homestead has turned into to the best race of the year because of the, the drama that comes with it. You know, yep. it, yeah, I, I will really... not complain about this system. I think the system nope. is great. I think the stages no, add to it. Um, although I will say I am maybe one of the few that really liked the system before this current one where everybody was even at the start of each round. I like that. I like the yeah, drama that too. that created. Yeah. Um, I, I get too. why they did it the way they did it now, and I'm okay with it. But I like the old, the older system better. So yeah, just giving the winners more gravitas, yep. which I, I'm I'm good with. And that's the way it sh- I think that's the way it should be. If you're winning a lot, you should be rewarded. So was it Brad Keselowski that said get rid of the system altogether and just whoever wins the most races win, win yeah, wins the championship? That'd, yeah, that'd be an interesting uh, no. way to. Yeah. Yeah. Bad with that one either. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> would take okay away some, it. it would take away some drama towards the end of the year though if you yeah, had one guy running away with it but yeah how how i gotta ask you a question how okay. have we gone this far without talking about the biggest um story from the weekend yeah bubba's hit bubba's crash holy crap Man. dude you know and i think it looked i mean i don't want to take anything away from this is a horrible crash obviously a bad crash when it cracks the concrete behind the safer barrier yes but it looked way worse the way they cut to it in the broadcast because you caught just the tail end of him hitting that wall and it just looked like he came out of nowhere. I mean, it's yeah. still scary. It's scary to watch it in slow mo. But, well, yeah. but when they cut to it, it really made it even crazier and more frightening. But nothing like waiting to see him drop that window net and wondering if it's going to come down. And yeah, that relief. was a dramatic moment. Yeah, that was a dramatic moment when you're sitting there thinking, "When's the last time have you you've seen a window net not come down?" Right. It's been a long time. So even, to see that, I mean, Eric Almirola, wasn't it? I mean, did, yeah. That well, probably, and I, don't I think know. he put that, his down. Yeah, he. I think he did too. I don't remember the last time we've had a window net not come down within the within a, a fairly reasonable amount of time. Right. I mean, that's a, that was at least like a minute and a half, two minutes. Bubba was on uh, Blaney's podcast this week. Blaney was off, so Bubba came on and, and took his spot on the podcast. I didn't listen to the actual podcast, but there's some clips on NASCAR's YouTube channel. Um, I I uh, you know recommend checking it out. He talks a little bit about the window net and how he's basically still not used to that whole symbol of putting it down. He was more worried about catching his breath and all that stuff. And well, the spotter know he's okay. Time. But yeah, they, they were mad at him. The, the safety crew was mad at him because he didn't put it down because they were freaking out. Well, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think everybody was. Yeah. And we've seen we've seen that same crash fairly, I mean, fairly similar. Johnson did it a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, was that a practice crash when Johnson? No, Jimmy did it during a race. Was it during a race? And I, I think I recall if it was during a race, but I remember seeing the highlights of it. Jimmy did it during the race. I believe Hamlin might have done it the same race. And then Kane had the same issue, but Kane turned right, which is what your instinct doesn't tell you to do. But if you do it, you're going to be a lot better off because you're just going to slide along the wall and scrub off yeah. speed yeah. versus versus turning left, which is the natural instinct, which also Bubba said his car turned left when, he, when the brakes went because that right rotor goes. And yeah. and the left one grabs, so it pulls you left. Yeah. But and he was in the grass trying to scrub that speed, and that's another dramatic part of the crash when you see a bunch of sod just scattering all over the track. Well, and we've seen cars go airborne at Pocono. There's plenty of speed oh, wow. there at 195 to go airborne. I I'll tell mean, you what, Pocono's th- got going to happen the, there, right? And it's got some of the worst crashes in the history of NASCAR have it's happened at Pocono. It's just the way that track is designed. And first Bobby of all, Allison's career was ended at Pocono years, yep. you know, years ago. And you Davey's that, crash. Oh my God. Well, heck, yeah. you got Earnhardt's crash even back in the day in the yep. old Wrangler Ford. car. Same thing. Brakes went out and hit the wall and yep. Ken Schrader had a really bad one. There was, there's Dave Marcus. I remember Dave Marcus got airborne once. Yep. There's it's Steve Park. The way that Dick. track. Yeah. The way that track is designed. It just, especially just turn one, because 
you're going in there looking straight at a wall. You know, most tracks there's a good curve. The only other track that I can think of on the circuit that has a similar aspect to it is is Indy yeah. because Indy's got the square turns. And yep. that was one of the reasons the Homestead was reconfigured because that track was originally like that too. And people were getting hurt there because you'd go in and you'd hit the wall head on. Yes. And yep. so, but Pocono is even worse because it's not even a square, it's a triangle. So you got, you know, you go around that corner, you look where, where Bubba was. If that car wouldn't turn sideways, he's hitting that wall head on. Yeah. At about, you know, probably 175 at the, by the time he hit that wall. Yeah, because he wasn't slowing down no. anymore. I mean, he was done slowing down at that yeah. point. He yeah. was just holding on for dear life. So um, it's probably been said enough this week by every outlet there is, but man, kudos to the safety of NASCAR. No kidding. All the way around safe yeah. barriers, cars, Hans device, all of it. Every time I watch one of these old videos of cars hitting the concrete wall, it's like, holy crap. I can't believe we did that. Yeah. It's <laughs> like when you watch Rusty Wallace's crash with, and Davy Allison's Pocono crash, those right. crazy flips. You're like, how did those guys survive? I know. Like, how did you survive with what they used to drive? It's incredible. It really is. It really is. All right. So uh, let's see. What else did we talk about with Pocono? Not a ton, really. Um, Eric Jones comes home with a fifth place finish. William Byron, sixth. Chase Elliott, seventh. Ryan Newman, eighth. Ryan Newman's been clicking off some top He's ten finishes. He's consistent. And, yep. Yep. So. Brad Kozlowski had a really bad day. Yeah. He was. He had a no good, very bad day. He <laughs> yeah. had uh he had a run in with Kyle Larson, which was Brad's fault, and then Brad was ticked, and yeah. then he he cut a tire down late and yeah. and uh, stuffed it stuffed it in the fence too. So yeah, yeah. bad day for him too. Yeah, thirty eighth place finish for him. Yep. Um, yeah. So other than that, I mean, it's pretty much a standard Pocono race. It, it not maybe super eventful. You get a big wreck that's really odd, comes out of nowhere, which you know. I said it. Yeah. We we were due for something like that. Weird things happen at Pocono. It's just a strange track. It just does. Yeah, it just does. Yep. Yeah. Um, one other thing that happened at Pocono this weekend, and I slipped up the, the do we care a little bit higher in the show order tonight, because 13 cars failed post-qualifying inspection at Pocono. They had one of the short uh, weekends, like we did at at, uh, at Chicagoland, where they didn't pre-tech the cars for qualifying. So they did the, t the, the tech after qualifying which was also the pre-race qualifying 13 cars fo fail post uh, post qualifying inspection have to go to the back of the field. Two of those were the fastest two cars in qualifying, which is how Daniel Suarez got the pole. Do we care that these cars are missing qualifying and getting sent to the back? Is this, is this a story or not? This for me, I don't, as long as they're being properly reprimanded, right? you're going to fail. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to push limit and fail qualifying, yeah, you're going to get sent to the back. I just, I think that's quite an alarming number though, that right. we had 13. Um, yeah, we had a couple happen at Chicago, but not to this level and nobody up front. Right. Yeah. It's, and when you've got Harvick and Kyle Busch involved, it's going to make it a, a little bit bigger story too, just because, right. You know, they're, they're <laughs> not going to the their too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that too. So So here's why uh, I have an issue with it, and here's why I care. Yeah. And it. this was mentioned, uh, if if you haven't listened, I've been listening to different NASCAR podcasts trying to branch out a little bit uh, the past few weeks, and my wife turned me on, actually, to the Door Bumper Clear podcast with Brett Griffin and, uh, and TJ Majors. It's on Dale Jr.'s uh, channel, um, Dirty Mo Radio. And they were talking about this, and I don't remember if it was Brett or TJ that mentioned it. I'm guessing it was Brett. Because TJ went to the back, so I'm thinking Brett was the one. And uh, he, he mentioned, okay, so if you fail post-race inspection, you get to keep the win. But if you fail post-qualifying inspection, they take your time away. It's like, make up your mind. Pick a penalty. So it's okay for fans to leave Sunday and not and, – and, and, you know, or it's okay for people fans to leave Friday – or Saturday and not know who qualified on the poll, but it's not okay for that to happen with the finish. And I'm not saying that this is that they need to let the, let the, the guys who failed qualifying inspection stay in their spots. I'm saying back to the old argument, we need to take some wins away. If you fail post race, what do you think on that? I, I'm leaning. I mean, I'm with you. We're, we're in the modern era now. And, and I, I think I've said it on, on here before, but, I hate that they announce penalties late in the week after the race. Right. If somebody fail, I mean, honestly, we have the technology. Let's let's get this done. Speaking get of these which, cars in tech. Kevin Harvick gets a what did I think ten point penalty 
uh, also yeah. as a result yep. of, Har- of missing post race tech or post qualifying tech twice or more than once. Doesn't matter to him. Right. Who cares? Points penalties don't matter anymore to nope. Harvick and Kyle Busch. They once you get your win and it's not an encumbered quote unquote right. win, you're good. Take all the points away you want. Ain't gonna do anything. Yeah. But yeah, I I'm with you now. Um, I don't know if I was before, but like I said, we let's get these cars teched out, done, and within an hour or two, we should be able to know. Yeah, Kyle Busch was illegal. No wind this week. Right. Whatever. Whoever it is, we should we should know that. And I mean, oh my God, we've we've got all the information we need. We've got the technology to get it in your hand immediately. Right. Well, Done. unless the back bumper is painted black, in which case, that's allowed. Then then we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> then we got to run that that extra scan on it, so we're not quite sure. Ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, so, that's that that's takes, that's, that takes, that's my see, argument. That's a that's a one where James cares and he gets really. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> anything else with Pocono before we move on? Um, gosh, I think we cover, I mean, there's just a whole, not a whole lot to talk about Pocono, but I think we, I mean, for as, as far as Pocono is concerned, that was a pretty darn good race. Yeah. I think, I think we're still on that, on that good roll minus Kentucky. And we got Watkins Glen coming up, which is always entertaining. I, I love yeah. Watkins Glen. So yeah, let's keep it going. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have to worry about weather on Sunday, which was nice. Yeah. However, sure. so the Arca race on Friday, they could not have cameras other than onboard ca- or not onboard yeah cameras. that was interesting yes I'm glad because, of, because of lightning yet we still ran the race i have a problem with that i feel like if there's lightning yeah. and we can't run the equipment necessary to run cameras up on top of the roof we shouldn't have fans sitting in grandstands and i don't see it think it's fair even for an arca race where you know probably 20 people are there that really are terribly upset that they don't get to see a race and I understand that I think part of it had to do with the fact that ARCA canceled the week before in Berlin and in, here in Michigan, and they have rescheduled for the end of the month. So they didn't want to cancel two weeks in a row. But I yeah. feel like if there's, if there's lightning like that, you know, you talk, you look at, I mean, I look high school football games out here and if they see lightning, if they see a lightning bolt, it's 20 minutes before you can go back on the field period. Yeah. Yeah. And just, yeah, that was crazy. We, we, we've had people killed at Pocono with lightning before. Yeah, recently. Yeah. Not that long ago. <laughs> so and I know I know part of it was it's two different policies for two different or organizations or right. whatever. Well, it's NASCAR still, owns Arca now though, so I, don't I know, know, but it's the the people who do the T I was it yeah. Fox, Fox yeah. do the T yeah, right. so I guess it was the Fox rule or something. I I don't know. But I don't know. Yeah, I mean I'm with you. If we're not gonna be able to if we can't do everything to support the event, we shouldn't have have the event. Yep. Like move on. You you know just if there's light, like you mentioned high school football, if there's lightning and you, and it's enough to take the players off the field or the fans out of the stands, you're not going to have the players on the field playing right. a game. Yeah. It's all, it's either all or nothing. And I didn't watch the Arca race. So I don't know if they called the fans out of the stands from the little clips I saw. It looked like people were still in the stands, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think that at that point you need to just shut the race down and see what you can do to, to come back to it later. It, safety should take precedence. Yep. Always. So, Always. All right, let's talk about some news. Let's see how fired up we can get. First of all, I, I want to mention, because I know you probably aren't noticing it, and nobody's probably noticing it, but I have a sore on my tongue, <laughs> and I feel like <laughs> I'm slurring. I feel like... You're doing really good. Oh, I it's driving me crazy. So I, I, I feel like I can't talk. I'm spitting all over my microphone, but you guys well, the, can't Well, the funny that. thing that happened is when we were, when we were doing our pre-race, uh, our pre-podcast show, yeah. which you guys should get, you guys <laughs> should try to listen to at some point, um... If we ever get a if, chance, if we ever start like going live or something, we'll do the pre yeah. live so everybody can yeah, the, see the, it. Sometimes the pre podcasts are just as entertaining or more so entertaining. Sometimes but they're it, not appropriate for air though. So right before Eric hits the record button, I go, "Yeah, one day my dog is gonna freak out and start barking during the podcast." And sure enough, <laughs> the same. Like I don't know if you heard it. But I didn't hear it. Yeah, he was having a he was having a meltdown downstairs. So <laughs> he's good now. So we're. <laughs> We're good. Well, speaking of having a meltdown, maybe he heard that Brian France was talking about NASCAR this week. Oh, um, and maybe that's what got him riled up. I didn't uh, even put in the notes what Brian France said. I just put in the notes that he was on Sirius spouting a bunch of crap this week. Um, I don't know. I feel like somehow got he got killed. out of that room that they've got him locked in and, and got a microphone in front of him. And everybody's like scurrying, trying to get him off the air because he just shouldn't talk, period. I, I don't understand. Well, I guess our, 
don't know if I should say it. I'm going to say it. <laughs> Our country's being run by one of these. Uh, so I, <laughs> there. Uh, it's a it joke. took it's a joke, 71 people. episodes. It's a joke, people. <laughs> I'm just saying it's a joke. It's, I'm not leaning any way politically. It's just a joke. But seriously, Brian France, when he speaks, I mean, what? he has no idea. No. What he's doing. No. I tell you what, I... First of all, he shot down any idea of Xfinity or Cup at Eldora, which I think is complete BS because we've already had Steve O'Donnell, who I feel like is more involved in the day to day decisions in NASCAR, say things and then take them back and think, you know, things change. And so Brian France just needs to shut up. Um, I still predict that we see a, a Cup or Xfinity race at Eldora in the next 10 years, probably a Cup race. Um He's- so he shot that down. He basically shot down any changes in the schedule, but he kind of said changes in the schedule for the next couple of years, which we already know that we're not changing the schedule until after the, the contracts all run out. So that's not a surprise. He shot down, but didn't shoot down the rumors of NASCAR being sold. Basically said that the France family's committed and didn't go so far as to say they're not selling. I don't know. It just, I didn't hear the whole thing. I read a lot of stuff afterwards. I did listen to part of it. I was coming home or coming back to work from lunch and got to listen to it on Sirius. And I the whole, I couldn't get to work clo- quick enough to shut I my can car just off. see you talking in your car oh, out loud. I was, just, it's, yeah, pretty much. I was, animated. I was yelling back at him on the radio. So no, it's, I just, I don't want to accuse somebody of, of stuff. Here I go again. Here I go again. <laughs> I don't want to accuse, but it's like, he's, it's, there's like there's something wrong with him it just the seems he like talks. he's completely just out of touch with everything including his own he's organization a, yeah it's like he's purposefully antagonizing antagonizing a fan base that let's be real doesn't need any more irritation than it already has so when he comes out there and just he's like a heel he's like a wrestling heel yeah he comes out there and the and it's just infuriating right it's like the it's like NASCAR has a kindergartner running the show and everybody like Steve O'Donnell's probably like sitting in his office just rocking back and forth while he's listening to this going, Oh my god, get this over with. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think Brian France is largely responsible for a lot of the issues in the sport. I mean there's there's issues I've right never... now. There's issues with yeah. attendance and things like that and people are not as interested in cars and there, there's these there's these issues that are affecting NASCAR. But I, I think the diehards, I think the casuals, I think nobody takes him seriously. And every time he gets out there in front of people, he just – he gives the sport another black eye. And what a, it's frustrating. What a shame for a family that doesn't deserve to have – he's just he's just put a black eye on the mm-hmm. France family. And, Very much so. And the France family shouldn't have to – I mean, Big Bill and Bill Jr. were – you know what what they what they built is just incredible and then you've got this buffoon right <laughs> you know i saw i know i there's I, no I, other way to say it though you're I right know, I i'm mean... trying to be nice about it but he's he's a buffoon man yeah. it's anyway i think i did I, I messaged you this week about him didn't i like i think so. i can't i can't remember if i did or not but i was fired up too so I, we were both equally like disturbed yeah, I can't. I can't imagine that a Brian France interview went without us commenting back and forth on it. I, just, I don't yeah, remember I what we said, but I'm sure it happened. Just sell a majority stake and get the heck out of here. <laughs> yeah, I mean seriously, let's. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's time to. It's time to go. The France family doesn't need to sell NASCAR, but they need to get him out of there. Yeah, <laughs> should get Lisa in there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, and I don't know how much, you know, I've heard talk of. And I have no knowledge of it, but I've heard talk of that he's basically the, you know, the ceremonial head of the company that he doesn't actually is not actually involved in any any of the decisions. Well, if that's the case, then they should not put him out there when they make these yeah, announcements. Don't, and yeah, but get a new uh, mascot. Yeah, but you know, it's hard to believe too that he's not involved in some of that stuff. Obviously, it's a big organization now. It's not one person make calling all the shots. It's a group of people calling shots, but. It, regardless, it just every time he's on camera, every time he's behind a microphone, it just it's just getting worse. It, it's getting worse. Yeah, it just feels like now we're in damage control for the. And next the drivers year. were trying to tell us this years ago. That is we true. We got guys like Stewart and I think Kozlowski. There's a couple of guys that said, "Yeah, we'd love to see Brian in the garage. He just doesn't. He's not around." Yeah. And when he does, when he is around, he's just out of touch. Well, that's the thing is he he comes across as out of touch, 
and he doesn't do anything to make you believe that that's not the case. Right. So he just doesn't get it. All right. Now that our blood is boiling. Ah, that was good. Let's talk about the 2019 rules package. Oh since we're already fired up. Um, word came out this week uh, through a number of things. And now how do I not have that article pulled up? Racingboys.com. Anyway, there you go. Racingboys.com. Uh, First time I've ever been here, to be honest with you. Yeah. Had an article out this week that NASCAR is uh, considering running the all-star package at many races next year. Not oh just our couple that we were thinking might happen. Um, proposed 2019 event implementations at 14 races on next year's schedule. So here's what, and of course this is all unconfirmed. None of this has been announced. It could all change. It could have been a rumor that somebody heard wrong. Who yep. knows? Yep. But yep. supposedly this new package, it's called the NA 18 D race package feature would feature an engine with a tapered spacer to produce roughly 550 horsepower which is 150 more horsepower than what was generated at the all-star race. Um, target RPM, 8,500. They believe that it will improve fuel mileage and the ability to, they'll be able to reduce the fuel capacity to try and maintain the same number of laps for a fuel run. Uh, they are also working on a single gear ratio for each race, um, et cetera, et cetera. They're also looking at um, other engine rules and things like that for the future. But anyway, um, that's the talk. So I guess, first of all, you and I both have agreed that I kind of, I, I was really on board with the all-star package and I'm kind of at the point after seeing some really good races that, you know, Kentucky could have used some help, but I just think we're going to get some stinkers sometimes. And I think we need to, yeah, we need to actually fix the issue versus trying to manufacture racing. So I'm kind I was kind of on board with scrapping this whole package. Um, but that doesn't look like it's going to happen. So do we look at, the negative of we're going to get this package probably, and we're going to get a lot of tracks or do we look at the positive of at least they're not putting a restrictor plate on it. They're going to do this tapered spacer. It's going to have more horsepower. You're going to have more throttle response. It's not going to be as bad as running restrictor plate on all these tracks. Yeah. I'm, I'm more comfortable with that than the rest the restrictor plate to me. It was the, was the big, I just want the cars to be driven by drivers with right. talent because the, the tapered I, spacer they run everywhere in the truck series don't they yeah i think so yeah i think you're right about that yeah or at least so, they did and, at one time yeah and look what happens when kyle bush is out there running the truck right i mean that's the most talented guy and yeah. you know and it, it shows i just yep. want i just want you know the best of the best to be rewarded as such and to be challenged from time to time right and if you're going to have this restrictor plate wild card races i i just I can't get on board with that. Yeah. I just, I just can't. I yeah. Just can't. I, I mean, I love the restrictor plate races. I just don't want to see it every as they week. Are. Yeah. I don't want it to be a, a screwball show as it is even, you know, I mean, the, the biggest race of the year is the Daytona 500 and it doesn't feel like it anymore the way it ends up. So yeah, it's a wild. Yeah. It's just kind of a shot in the dark. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I you got guys who are really good at it and they, and they show, but. Even the even the best guys. I mean, Brad Keselowski is the best restrictor play racer. He doesn't have a Daytona 500 win. Right. You know, it's just it's just a, that's just kind of a crapshoot of it. I just have a hard time that we tested this package one time and we didn't even test this package. I, yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. I was gonna say the same thing. So it, it, let's, it's a let's lot hope, of rules. Yeah. For something we don't know, we haven't tested past May. Let's hope either for some reason they know something that we don't, or let's hope that this is a rumor and that they're going to test it next year in a couple races and then implement yeah. it. Um, because I'd really hate to see them. I mean, I guess NASCAR can do anything. They can say, we're going to run this at 14 tracks. They could run it at the first one and it could be a complete dud. And they could say, you know what? Forget it. We're yeah. going to scrap it. Um, so I don't know. And maybe that's the way they'll approach it to teams and say, you know, we're going to run this. The plan is to run it at these tracks, but don't get ahead of yourselves. Don't build a bunch of cars because we're going to try it these first couple and see how it goes. Who yeah. knows? I mean, I guess I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that they won't completely just crap the bet on this one, but I'm, I'm some still worried. <laughs> There's some interesting tracks on this list, just te both Texas races, so that, yeah. that includes one playoff race, both Kansas races. That's our second playoff race. Kansas shouldn't have it. Chicagoland shouldn't have it. They've proven that those tracks no. are good enough. Both Michigan dates are I'm okay on there. with Michigan. Indianapolis. I'm okay with Charlotte. I'm okay with Texas. 
Indianapolis Indy, is the only different track on the list. Yeah, Indy, I'm concerned. Well, I mean, you know, well, it, we'll it yeah, helped. Xfinity's the ex- going to run it again, so we'll see something similar. Yeah, they're so different, though. The Xfinity cars are is, so different. It is. It is. You're right. Yep. It, you're right. You're right oh, about that. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah, I'm. I'm just kind of glad you came to. <laughs> I think. I, I think you and I are both like equally. <laughs> now yeah like, i'd be okay if they just said forget it we're just gonna keep the package we got oh well, yeah and like we talked about you know a few months back i would be okay if they decided to run the all-star a form of the all-star package you know maybe on the second date or one right. of the two dates like like texas pick one right or michigan pick one you know and let's try it for i mean if we try it for a year what's it gonna hurt but i still don't like it right but I would be more tolerant. Of yeah, it, we I try think. it for a year, and what's it going to hurt? At the time when you're when you're hemorrhaging fans, though, you got to be true. careful. I mean, yeah, you do because people do. aren't going to give you a second chance at this. That's point. also the yeah, and then just devil's advocate. But maybe that's also the time to be um, true. Yeah, to to try something. You know, complacency can lead to. You know that that complacency can be great sometimes. I but just it's not... feel like the people that are screaming for change are not screaming for this type of change. No, I'm not screaming for this type of change. <laughs> no, you know, maybe we should ask Brian France. What right. His... <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, I've really come to the realization over the past, you know, few months that, you know, it, it's really easy to go back and look at the past and yeah. all those great races. But first, you know, we talked about on this podcast, some of those great races weren't as great as we remember them for one. And they didn't right. happen as often as we remember them happening. Yeah, it's organic. It's the organic finishes that that mean something. Right. You know? you know, and maybe, you know, for me in, you know, 1996, let's just pull that year out of a hat for an example. You know, in 96, maybe there were a lot of great races to me, but I didn't have DVR. I didn't have the ability to check on Twitter and watch. You know, I, I didn't watch every race yeah. religiously. So. Yeah. I likely turned into those tuned into those races that were on network TV, the Talladegas, the Daytonas, these tracks that are good yeah. races, the Bristol night race, you know, that always produced a great race. And so my yeah. memory of it is all great races because I didn't watch the boring ones. Right. And guess what? My favorite era of NASCAR is the nineties and early two thousands. And that's, I mean, Jeff Gordon was winning, you know, 80 plus races yeah. <laughs> through that stretch. So, I mean, how, you know, nobody else really had a shot. And then Jimmy Johnson came, came in and took over and it was dominated by like, you know, just a handful of guys. So, right. And see, I guess this is where maybe I'm, I'm, I think I'm definitely a rarity in that I'm, I consider myself a longtime fan. My first NASCAR race was 1989. I grew up in the sport. I was born in 1981. I've watched the sport my entire life. I, I don't remember an era that I enjoyed more than the one that we were currently in. I think we have great racing. I think we have big stars. Uh, Do we have Dale Earnhardt? No, I mean, no, but to me, these guys, I mean, to me, Jimmy Johnson's a legend. I mean, I, I respect what he's done despite the fact that maybe his personality is not to an Earnhardt level or something like that, but I wouldn't want to go back to the, the other, the old eras. I like the fact that I have, you know, I can go on my computer and listen to scanner chatter. I can go on and, and track yeah. the results in almost real yep. time. I can watch it on my phone. I can go to the track and I don't have to find a seat by a TV screen so I can see the replay. I can just pull it up on my phone. I like the fact that the crowds are smaller than they were in 2006. <laughs> I like the fact that it's not a freaking nut, nut house with all the people there. And, you know, I like the fact that the amenities are being built and the bathrooms are nicer than they used to be. The seats are wider than they used to be. I don't, I'm just, I guess I'm of the rarity of, I'm really happy with what we have and what the sport has become. Are there problems? Yes, there's definitely problems. There's things that can be improved, but I don't know. That's, I guess that's what frustrates me with the negativity. Um, you and I talked and we won't talk about the article so much on, on the podcast because you haven't had a chance to read it and it just hit before we went on the podcast, but Jeff Gluck put up an article talking about his, some of his frustration and he's. I mean, he's like the exact opposite standpoint for me on this. And I get it. Jeff's been in the sport a lot longer, like covering the sport a lot longer than I have. It's, I've got, you know, two years of somewhat being involved in it versus just a fan. But I don't know. I just I, I feel like that's what frustrates me with all this negativity is I don't get it. You know, we had we went through a time in the mid 2000s where everybody loved NASCAR. But to me, it felt 
artificial because those people weren't really NASCAR fans. They were there because it was cool. Suddenly it was cool to be a NASCAR fan. And so, you know, I remember going to school and wearing a NASCAR shirt and getting made fun of. And then Mm -hmm. suddenly all my friends had NASCAR shirts. It's like, these are the same people that made fun of me for watching this, watching cars go around in circles. They're not going to be here in 10 years. And guess what? They're not here. Right. So I don't know. That's, that's my take on it. No, yeah, and if you're a pure race fan, you, you, you this there's a lot to enjoy right now. Yeah, and things things are pretty good, and, they, and like you said, there's issues. But the right. one thing that we don't have, I think the big difference, is we don't have a trans, like, I don't know, we just don't have that that supernova star. Right. And I don't think I don't think a Dale Earnhardt's coming anytime soon. I think you have potential for it though. I mean, it's, I really think <sighs> Kyle Busch could step into that role. Even if everybody hates him, that's fine. Everybody hated Dale Earnhardt for a long time. Everybody hated Rusty right. Wallace for a long time. I think Kyle Busch could do that. I think, but I think though, Kyle Busch, this is my personal, you, and feel free to disagree with me. I don't think Kyle Busch is ever going to be a trans, just a, uh, I don't know. I just don't think he's going to be. I think the problem is Kyle can't come across. At least that could be a transcendent star. Like here, here, you can't be the, the you can't be the bad guy when you look like right. you're whining. A so great, that's, that's the problem that Kyle has. Yeah. And if you want to look at a, like a comparative um, sport to NASCAR in this instance, look at Tiger Woods and golf. Right. When Tiger Woods is around and he's in the hunt, holy smokes, look at the ratings, look at the people paying attention, everybody's screaming on social media. Speaking of a sport that everybody, nobody cared about and then suddenly everybody's <laughs> a fan of. Everybody cared about, yeah, because – and when do I pay attention to golf? I pay attention to golf when Tiger's around. Right. And I started watching thing. golf because of Happy Gilmore, so it's well, yeah, there you go. It's well, Happy yeah. Gilmore for me, not Tiger Woods, but <laughs> but see, but for the majority of people, it's like, <laughs> and and back in the day, in our in our favorite era of the '90s and 2000s, our our, our I guess our our most uh, prominent era for for the two of us, it was Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon. Yep. And Jeff Gordon came along and was going to carry the banner, and when Dale died, we lost our Tiger Woods. Yep. You know, Jeff Gordon was able to carry it for a little while, Dale Jr., but the fans didn't have – we did, we just didn't have the Tiger Woods. I mean, we, never, we never got him back. Well, we the, and, we basically had – had uh, we had Dale Jr. and Kevin Harvick that were o- able to plug there, the hole yeah, so the, but, the, ble- the bleeding didn't happen as yeah, quick the boat as was it would have. Si- yeah, the boat's still sinking. It's just – Right. Yeah. And you're, and you're going to have – and golf's going to have a huge problem. Right now, Tiger's trying to make a comeback. Mm-hmm. And he's and he's being somewhat successful, and golf is going through the roof again. Right. And he's he's in his forties. <laughs> you know, he's not gonna heal the golf forever. Right. So we're, the you, golf's gonna have the same type of struggle. You can't manufacture that personality though, or and, you exactly. Know, so you just have to let it happen naturally, and screwing exactly. with the rules package doesn't do that. Exactly. We want Chase Elliott, somebody like that, to be that person, and I just you know, first I don't, of all, I don't loosen know. the reins and let him talk. Yeah, which has yep. happened. I mean, it's not as bad as it was in the 2000s. I mean, people don't remember. I mean, I, I it was as silly as suddenly, you know, you had drivers that were told to get out of their car when they won the race and knock the sponsor boxes off the roof of the car because they weren't their sponsor. I mean, th- this yeah. is how programmed they were to be completely cognizant of what was on the screen and not oh, so much wow. about having emotion and. So, um, speaking of yep. rules, uh, one other rule change for 2019 that will occur at a couple of races is NASCAR is going to ban the windshield wipers on road courses if it's dry. Apparently, the teams have discovered, um, Auto Week reports, and we've, we've talked about this before, the teams have discovered that there's a slight aero advantage with the windshield wipers. They've had drivers messing with them while they go around the track and adjusting them to different places. And I think... Uh, I think it was JGR that figured it out first and was running them on their Xfinity yeah. cars before everybody else was. And so I didn't put this in, do we care? But I- I'm going to ask, do we care about this either? Um, I mean, it's something, but I don't give a crap. Let them have the windshield wipers and play with them. Who cares? Yeah. Let them run them on the, on the ovals. Well, maybe we'll have our new all-star package. <laughs> there you go. I just <laughs> think, I don't know. I, there's no reason. There's no reason to have them on there, but these teams are going to find something else. They're going to mess with the knob that the, thing connects to i mean they're gonna find something else to screw yeah, with it's just another an way edge. to get a little bit of an advantage i don't think this is a big deal i don't think that these guys are getting oh. enough of an arrow advantage at a road course that it really matters that they have the windshield yeah and it, it could matter a little more at Watkins glen though i could see where Watkins glen and and charlotte 
could matter. Yeah. I think too. Uh, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, Sonoma's a little bit more of a short track style. Right. Um. But yeah, you've got a lot of wide open speed at Watkins Glen and, and Charlotte. So I could see. I don't care, I but don't I could care. see where it could be a problem. Who cares? <laughs> I know. Who cares? All right, let's bust through some news things quickly here. Uh, Talladega is spending $50 million on infield renovations. Uh, a bunch of awesome. new stuff. The the garage area that they're going to do looks spectacular. They're going to have a, a nice high-dollar high outdoor or open-air covered lounge area for fans. Um, they're updating the media center all that stuff. Victory Lane's going to change, um, give fans good access to it. The, the garage design, actually, I was looking at some renderings from Phoenix – um, it's similar to that where, I mean, these fans are, there's a, basically a fence and they can walk right into the garage and stand on this fence. that's like waist high and see into the garage. I think that's spectacular. I mean, I, I could see it from a team standpoint, it's probably frustrating to have fans that close. Um, but you know, as somebody, first of all, as somebody who's been able to go in the garage when it's hot, you know, over the past couple seasons, it's not quite as exciting as you think it is once you get down there. But to be able to have that access as a fan and still have that separation to where you're not in the way in the garage, because I'll tell you what, the garage, especially when it's hot, I understand why they don't let people, just anybody down there. It's freaking dangerous. Um, I'm not comfortable walking around down there when it's hot. I try to stay next to buildings and stuff so I'm not getting hit by cars because they roll through with their engines off. You can't hear them coming. They're silent. And with the noise around the track, it's, it's pretty crazy. So to give fans that opportunity to get in there, get close and have that experience without being in the way is a really, really neat thing. Yeah. I love, I, I mean, I love everything about it. I love the victory lane yeah. thing that they got in there where fans can kind of get close to that. It's, it's cool. You, you see the, all these tracks are, you know, it's kind of making its cycle around Phoenix is, you know, is getting closer to completion. Now tell it's Talladega's turn. I mean, really Michigan was one of the first ones. Michigan really was. Yeah. Early on. Yeah. They got um, the new suites and everything in the inside. Now it seems yeah. like it was forever ago, but yeah, now they're going to be the, they're going to be the old dog here yep. eventually. So, um, but they're making the improvements too, slight ones, but nothing to this extent. Right. I guess the only thing I can say is that I feel like, you know, you're spending $50 million on this renovation. They spent a ton of money at, at Daytona a couple of years ago, Phoenix is spending a bunch of money. Richmond spending a bunch of money, you know, for the doom and gloom people, things may not be as great as they were in the two thousands, but things can't be that bad. If we're spending $50 million a track to build these amenities that aren't necessary. Yes. They're trying to get more people to the track. They're hoping to get some return on the investment of it, but the money's coming from somewhere. So it, it, it's I don't feel like it's as dire as some people want you to believe it is. Right. So I agree. Yep. Absolutely. Um, we got some throwback schemes revealed this week. We're only a few weeks away from Darlington and the throwback weekend. Um, yes, run, months. run through some of these real quick. We've kind of we've hit on some of them throughout the season. We haven't hit on all of them. Um, so Kyle Bush with the excellent announcement for the Ernie Irvin throwback, ah, which I know yes. I know James is a big fan of James being an Ernie Irvin fan. Oh yeah. Um, I'm all in. It's a pretty Best cool looking scheme. car. I yep. don't know that I agree with you on that. Um, cause I Although really... he did, they, they messed it up. They how... messed the scheme up. I didn't notice. How did they mess it up? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a red that's next to the orange as you're going from the front to the back of the car. Uh huh. And it's too dark. Huh. It's not supposed to be that dark. I have many, a Skittles or an Irvin car <laughs> die cast and it's not that way. So it's kind of like with the, uh, the Matt Kenseth tied one that they kind of, they did, Kind of perfect, did, but, did, but didn't quite. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a little blemish, but still the best paint scheme uh, so far. I'm excited. My... Kyle's running a throwback this year. I disagree. It was I, so good to see Ernie, though, right? It was good. To it was see really Ernie good to see Ernie. Too. I am leaning pretty heavily toward um, so far Joey Logano, Steve Park scheme. I think that one's pretty cool. Yeah, um, that, that one's good. The, that one's the good. really good one, the best one, I think, is the Jimmy Johnson scheme, which is Jimmy Johnson from what last year? Uh, <laughs> Two years ago. I was dumbfounded when I saw it's that. It's terrible. Like, it's a golden opportunity to run his rookie scheme, and they blew it. There, there are several good schemes that he could run, and no, that 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 thing. He had ever, you know, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon. How many times did Jeff Gordon go back and run the Rainbow Warrior? Right. Jimmy Johnson can't get his scheme, his original scheme back. Yeah. I mean, that's just a it's, no-brainer. It's disgusting. Um, how did Jimmy let that happen? I, I blame know. Jimmy. He doesn't care. <laughs> blame JJ. Hashtag blame JJ. <laughs> uh, Ryan Newman running the Neil Bonnet uh, scheme. That, that one's pretty cool. 
Yep, I love that. Um, Bubba Wallace with the Richard Petty scheme. Bubba, the one driver that could run a different scheme every year and still tribute the same driver. <laughs> There's yep. so many Richard Petty schemes you could run. They so. always look good. I never put them in the discussion of the best schemes because we've seen the Richard Petty colors for so long on right. so many different cars. But still, it always looks good. Yeah, it's always good to see that 43 with Petty Blue regardless yeah. of which version of it they go with. So I, I, pro I probably missed some. I know there's been announcements, but uh, those are the ones that I was running down that I know got announced this week. So yeah, um, can't wait for that race. That race is spectacular. It, it'll yep. be a good couple time. weeks away. Oh, the other one, uh, one that was good that I saw was Cole Custer's running the AJ Foyt throwback. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. In the Xfinity yeah, the race, Xfinity that one's series. really yeah. good. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. Love it. Can't wait. Yep. Um, Casey Kane says he wants to stay at Levine Family Racing, or he'd like to. Um, he could see himself returning and running there for a long time. Um, they they do not have plans for next year yet. Nothing's been announced. So I'm to start politicking, Casey. There it's you go. He uh, to keep, to keep his job. <laughs> Frontstretch.com has a nice interview up there. The links in our show notes um, at thesuperspeedway.com. You can check that out. Uh, Casey says he's asked about uh, what his plans are for 2019. Casey says, I don't know about next year, but I've enjoyed this year. I want to run better. But so does everybody on my team. To me, we're going to be only be only be better the longer we do it together. And I think there's a lot of potential at LFR. I see myself racing at LFR for a while. He's so. got to be holding out hope that they're going to partner with the right big team, right? That's right. that's kind of Casey's long term play at this point. I would think so, unless he's just he happy cruising, you know. Well, uh, I don't know. Yeah, and unless well, Casey's never struck me as an ultra competitive guy, so right. that, that could be. That could be. I just feel like if I'm in Casey's position, yeah, I'll, I want to stay at LFR if I can get the Martin Truex Jr. Oh, yeah. type deal. Yep. If LFR goes to, to Toyota and you get that Joe Gibbs alliance or something, which I'll is not. i what, you know, they, they haven't run as well as some people had hoped they'd run, but they've had moments of brilliance. Um, they've, they've shown that they can be competitive, and if they get the right additive as that team, they could – you know, they're not going to contend for wins every week, but they could contend for wins occasionally. And yeah, and maybe get a restrictor plate win or something. Yeah. Get yourself, get in the playoffs at least first round or two. Yeah. yeah. I think that team's doing it right. I mean, they've got a driver that they, that they can believe in. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe in Casey Kane anymore. I mean, <laughs> he, he's got talent. He's, he, he's, he's fine. Had some good moments, but yeah, he's um, fine. Not to the level of some of these other guys for sure. No, but like, like furniture row, they, they went out and they got a Kurt Busch on the cheap yep. and they parlayed that into a Martin Truex jr. And it look how it worked out for him. I mean, they, they were just in the right place at the right time, got some really good drivers and it, it turned into a championship. The so. level of risk was a lot less than Kurt Busch though. Oh, sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. you know, Casey's not going to blow up your entire yeah. organization by saying something but, stupid or right, but if, threatening if to LF... fight a reporter or something <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but if you're LFR and you, you know, this is the, this is the move that's proven to work. You go get a guy on the down. Yeah. Casey Kane's on the down and He's got tremendous upside if you can get him there, if you can get him the equipment. And it's proven with Truex and Kurt Busch. And, um, yeah, if, if they can get the dominoes to fall right, they, they'll be in good shape. Speaking of that, how much fun was that year that Kurt Busch went to the 51 car? And oh my every God. race was just – there was just this intensity, like there, this tension of is this going to be the week, the week that he blows it up? Is this going to be the week that he loses? Yeah. Like Talladega when he gets in the wreck and drives away – with the the medical worker stuff on the trunk of the car and it goes falling he, off like just yeah. every week was like oh it's gonna be the week he it's was gonna be the week. he was brilliant that year by the way oh, absolutely yeah. like he that drive he had at Sonoma mm -hmm. and that was twenty that was twenty twelve but he had that drive at Sonoma where he could have won that race with a broken car yep just proved proved how much of a wheelman he really was well and he I kept himself in in the spotlight and yep. and didn't blow it up even though Threatened it, Bob Pockris. So you thought he was going to so right? yeah it was uh it was interesting that you know we, we could use another one of those too that would be fun that was such a weird year too because that's the AJ Allmendinger year yeah where AJ got his ride and that was it like AJ finally got to Penske I know man and failed the drug test and that, that was, was it that such was... a bummer I was so on board with AJ running that car yeah oh yeah that 22 went through some 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 uh transition yeah it did that stage all right uh spencer gallagher is going to get his first cup start this weekend with bk racing he's going to drive the 23 car um review journal has a interview with him up there as well um obviously he's been he's run one xfinity race since he's his suspension was lifted for nascar um refusing the article to say what it was that he did 
uh, that got him suspended, but he something stupid. Yeah, said that basically it was a mistake and he's not going to make it again, as everybody says in those situations. Um, but and it was a one time issue, blah blah blah. You know, typical answer for that. But yep. he's he's only run the one race in the Xfinity Series. He ran at Kentucky because they're still fulfilling ob- obligations they've made to other drivers uh, and that team. But he gets yep. to start at BK Racing, and it sounds like uh, sounds like GMS is is wanting to buy BK Racing and move. Their or when your daddy's atmosphere. got your sponsor, you even when the door closes on you, it gets opened back up yep. sometimes. Exactly. So, exactly. And he gets opened he, back up, kicked open, whatever has to happen. Yeah, and he's not that bad of a driver, honestly. No. He's, he, I mean, he's got obviously he's got the win at Talladega this year, but I mean, he's proven he's he's pretty solid. So yeah, good. I mean, I don't know if he's the right guy to get his first Cup start, but I mean, it, it it's gonna happen with sponsorship situations the way they are. So right. Um, yeah. one more thing I, I do, we were going long, but I, I wanted to talk about this and probably should have put it up further in the order so we could have gotten to it without having to feel like we have to rush through it. Oh, um, that's okay. But, uh, Bob Pockers put an article up, which I thought was really good. He, uh, on ESPN.com, the links in the show notes, the article is with five cup races to go. These long shots could push for a playoff spot. And it's really interesting. It's looking at the net, at the last races before the playoffs start. And guys that have run well there and could potentially be a spoiler and come in and sneak in and, and get a win and, and get into the playoffs and kind of turn the whole thing on its head. Um, I'm going to run through these real quick as to who he's talking about here, and we can discuss it a little bit, um, I guess, as long as we want to here. Um, so Watkins Glenn, A.J. Allmendinger, obviously is high on that list. Um, A.J. has his only win at Watkins Glen uh, previously. It, it is his better track of the two. He blew the motor at Sonoma, disappointed uh, himself and the team with that one. So um, I, I think expectations are pretty high for him at Watkins Glen. I kind of feel like that's not going to bode well for him. But anyway, so that's that's Pockers as mentioned for Watkins Glen. Michigan, we have Daniel Suarez, which I think is an interesting one. Um, Suarez won his first uh, Xfinity or Truck Series, Xfinity race. It was a fan, yeah, Xfinity. I was at that race. Yep. Yeah. Um, he won his first race there at Michigan. He runs well there. Um, Suarez, we've already talked about, is right on that edge of, of getting a win. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him get one in the next yep, five he races. Needs, yep, he needs it too. And that's that's a track. I would not be surprised at all to see him get it. Um, I, go ahead. No, I was just saying. Yeah, go ahead and jump going, in on these, James. We'll do these no, one no. at a time, I guess. Yeah, no, I was just going to say I really like this next one that okay. you're going. I, I think that this is actually probably the most Well, take it. Take it. One. Go for it. Who is it? Yeah, so Bristol, Ricky Stenhouse. Yes. And I know it sounds crazy, but he's really he's good at really Bristol. really well there. He's got everything but the win there. Yeah. So What's his, I think, uh, I mean, okay, career average finish of 10th. That's pretty good. I mean. Yeah. That's good at Bristol. Are you kidding? Yeah. That's great. Second yeah. and fourth past four finishes. So I just that that team is just I don't know. I, I Rush running would look a little bit better at Pocono this week. So maybe I don't know. I, I just like Ricky Stenhouse there. Yeah, I think it's going to be solid. Yep. Um, Darlington, I think, is a big stretch. Uh, Pocker says Ryan Newman. Yeah. Um, is, I don't see Ryan Newman getting a win here. I think Ryan Newman's done winning in the Cup Series personally. Probably. Um, I, yeah. I think the fact that he's driving a Chevrolet. He's driving for Richard Childress. I mean, not anything bad at, against Richard Childress, but they're not at the level of Penske and and Chip Ganassi and and those guys well, I, are behind right now. So. I thought he was done before he won last year, and he that True. dude finds a way to sneak one out every couple of years. True. So he maybe. usually does find a way to sneak into the playoffs, and and so who yeah. knows? But I, I think he, if anything, he points his way in at the last minute. Um, and then Indianapolis is a good one. Jamie McMurray, um, he has yes. does have a win there. Um, and he's done well there. So that not a, not a bad choice there as well. So, yep. If, it, if, I mean, Casey Kane won the dang thing last right. year. So if Casey Kane can get an Indianapolis win. Why can't Jamie McMurray? If Martin Truex Jr. Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick just wreck going into the first turn, yeah. you know, and you say that's ridiculous, but last year we wrecked Kyle Busch and Martin Truex right. Jr. The yeah. two best drivers. So you just add yeah. Harvick to the mix and it could happen. So Has- has anybody had more of a backsliding season than Jamie McMurray? Oh, McMurray that team was actually me. pretty good last year. He and frustrates just... me because he came into the Cup Series with such brilliance, coming in and winning for Sterling Marlin, filling in for him, and, and just, I don't know, man. He he seems to have promise. He comes out, he'll win these, he wins these big races, wins the 500, Daytona 500, wins the Brickyard 400. He, he's able to win all these great races and then just, is just nowhere. 
he almost won all the majors in one year. Yeah. Which was crazy. Which is which is a long time ago now. When you think he's an old guy now compared to the rest of the, it would, it's just crazy to me. He's one of those guys. Gosh, I remember him coming in and just he looks so young. He still looks young. Right. And I, I remember I thought, well, he was my age, but no, he's he's an old older guy. Jamie <laughs> older feels guy. like so I've I've bumped into Jamie a few times at the track and Jamie to me feels like a Formula One guy. He feels like he should be in Formula One. He just seems to have the personality more for yeah. that type of he's a different and guy. I'm not I'm not saying that bad. That's not a bad thing. But he no, just no. doesn't seem to fit in as well with the NASCAR crowd as he would somewhere like Formula One or IndyCar. Yeah, he's just a weird guy. I don't know. Yeah. He's got seven career wins. It's just God. That's it, all he has is seven, huh? Yeah, and he had the like he had that year, twenty ten, where he was on a mission, and he still didn't have that great of a year. He just was really good in the big races, right? Yeah, yeah he's won Daytona a couple times, the five hundred included. He's won Talladega, um, so yeah, and Indy. He's got the Indy win, obviously Charlotte. He brought yeah. uh, he brought the you know the the hard liquor sponsorships to NASCAR with Crown Royal. I mean, sure did. Yeah, that was a big deal. So. Yep. I don't know. Yeah, he, he's, he's disappointing to me because I feel like Jamie has could have done better in his career and just hasn't seemed to be able to capitalize on the opportunities. That you know who's going to have a career just like him? Austin Dillon. Yeah. Austin Dillon can end his career with like nine wins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're probably and, right. Yeah, I just, that, that's what it seems like to me. It's like yeah. those guys are kind of on the same trajectory, which I, is weird. Yeah, but. I agree with that. That's interesting. <laughs> All right. Anything news wise, James, that I missed? I'm looking at Twitter here. I don't really see anything popping up. I think we covered it all, man. That was good. We good. got heated up there at the be- at the <laughs> beginning and and let it roll. Yes, yes. All right. So this weekend we go to the Go Bowling at the Glen from Watkins Glen International Raceway. Back on the road course, uh, the Finger Lakes area of New York. Um, looking forward to a good race, James. You get the first pick this week. Who are you going with? Uh, I'm guessing we're taking the big three off the table again, right? Oh, uh, well, it's a ro- it, is, it is a road course, though. So technically, you don't have to, but you don't have to. But we we usually stay away from them. Yeah. Um, how about we do this? Let's do this. Let's make our picks, and then we'll pick which of the big three we think is really going to win. Oh, okay, okay. I like that. <laughs> it like just that. it won't okay. counter anything, but that's because I yeah. think I know who's going to win. I think uh, I'm going to leave this this guy open for you because he hasn't done anything recently to show me any confidence in picking him. I would like to pick AJ Allmendinger, but I'm not going to, I'm not picking him either. No, he just hasn't done anything to and we And he's probably one of the favorites. He's, yeah. and, you know, in, and on the short list anyway, but yeah, he hasn't done anything to, to impress me recently. Um, I think I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with Joey Logano. Joey Logano is a good pick. He's been really good, like quietly good this year. And I think he could, um, he could uh, steal one here. Hmm. Oh, how do I want to go here? How do I want to go? So I would like to pick Chase Elliott because he's, I mean, he's only ran two races there. He's got a pretty high average finish, but Chase just, I don't know. I don't feel like Chase can have a breakout day at, at Watkins Glen. Yeah, it's probably not it. Yeah. Um, but I don't think the guy I'm going to pick is going to have a breakout day at Watkins Glen either, but I think he's got a better shot. I'm going Brad Keselowski. I'm going to go same team. Yeah, as I like that too. Yep. Brad's, I was eyeballing Brad. He's Brad's really good, good there. there. Yeah. And yeah. He hasn't got a win yet though, which is surprising, but he is good. Yeah. He, he's due for, he's due for something to happen. So, um, dark horse, I get first dark horse. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Who do I want to pick for dark horse? I'll go Casey Kane as a dark horse. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. That, I, I, he's off my pick list. I'll never pick him again, but yeah, <laughs> pretty solid. Um, you know who I like? Uh, Eric Almirola here. That's a good one. Is he considered a dark horse? I guess it's road course. Yeah, I guess he, can, can, he doesn't he, have a average, win. I think he can be a dark horse. He's Certainly never had a, had a top like 10 this. here. Yeah. Um, his average finish is 24.6. So he's pretty far down, but I keep looking for opportunities for that guy to break through. And this could be his last, you know, maybe opportunity as a dark horse. As soon as Almirola gets off, gets a win, he's off the dark horse list. But I think he could still be a dark horse at most tracks right now. Yeah, I think so. Some tracks, it's a cheat to take him as a dark horse. Yeah, mile and a half, so I think we have to take him off the board. Yeah, and I, you can't pick him on a restricted plate either, I don't think. No, so this is an opportunity here, I think, just to maybe try to, to steal one. There so. you go. All right, so I'll, I'm going to say I think Kyle Busch is going to win this thing this weekend. Okay. I'll take Truex. You're going to take Truex. Okay. Yep. Truex has been really good. Obviously we talked about it, but 
Um, if you're going to take Kyle Busch, I'll take Truex, and then yeah. Harvick will end up winning the thing. Probably. I mean, all three of them are going to be there. It's all there is to it. It's gonna yeah, be who's gonna, yeah, who's going to screw up? Who's going to the... screw up? Who's going to play the strategy right? That's the biggest thing and, and potential for, you know, mechanical, mechanical issues or anything like that. But I, I, it's, it's all going to come down to strategy. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I have high hopes for a good, re, good uh, road course race because we haven't had one in a couple of years, but I don't, I just think stages are going to ruin this one again. Too, Can we put so. some oil down on the track for the last That uh, would be of, awesome. That would like be great. Had, in uh, 2012 we could really use someone like aj allmendinger that's desperate for a win running in second place within reach on a green white checker at the end right you know, that's what we need that that will give us what we want at the end of this race because aj is going to run over anybody he's got to if he's in like the top six yeah so because he needs that win. for it yeah this is it man and, if he doesn't get the win he's not in the playoffs and if keselowski's up there he's going to go for it too because he probably just wants that security blanket right or the playoffs. I, he's he's pretty much in, and he doesn't have to worry about it. But if he's got a chance to steal one, he's gonna pr- he's he's gonna push the issue. He's pushed the issue here before. Yeah, a couple of times. So we, we need a green white checker at the end of this thing. Yeah, but if Almondinger's there, that could get really exciting. If it, let's say he's like third to fifth. Yeah, that's that's going to be what you want to watch right there. Definitely, definitely. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, if you guys, uh, if you enjoy what you're listening to, um, first of all, check out our website, www.thesuperspeedway.com. We put the show notes up there and everything. Um, so we got links to all the articles that we talked about here today. Uh, certainly, if you want to see more from us, uh, we'll plug our Patreon page here real quick. Patreon.com slash the super speedway. We'd love for you to go on there and uh, and become a patron and contribute a little bit. And, and there's certain ways you can get involved in the show. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. Um, I'm not going to go crazy pushing it anymore. Just if you guys, I'll mention in each podcast, if you want to check it out, um, we're going to keep doing what we're doing regardless, but, uh, that certainly would help us get to more tracks and do a little bit more coverage. Uh, I will be at Michigan, not this weekend, but the following weekend. And that will be my last planned race of the year. I, I think that'll probably be the last one for me. Um, but, uh, just get on Patreon and, and contribute a little bit. Who knows? Maybe I'll get to another one. So, um, but if you like what you're seeing, that'd be awesome. If you guys could hook us up there. Uh, James, where can they find you on social media during the week? At James Cush on Twitter. You can find me at T Super Speedway on Twitter. You can find the Super Speedway on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Super Speedway. Website, thesuperspeedway.com. Check that out. Podcasts are on there. Show notes. There'll be a bunch of articles from Michigan on there. Um, other random things throughout. So check it out. Uh, you can find the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud, wherever you found us today. We hope you subscribe. Um, some things planned for the Michigan weekend. I won't talk about them this week. Maybe I'll talk about them last next week. Um, so far things have fallen through every time I talk about it, but I'm hoping to have a couple things going for Michigan week. So should be pretty cool. So, uh, James, anything else before we head on out of here? Uh, no, man, that's awesome. Right. I think that was a, that was a good show. A little bit long to this time, but we appreciate everybody sticking with us. It's not too that's bad. What we do. Not too bad. Right. Um, I, it's been a couple of weeks since we've done this. So I really just, I have to, got to get a, Get a slide. Yeah. Job. <laughs> no fashion slide. Job. Yeah, it's starting to wear off, but uh, there you go. Okay. All yep. right. So good weekend. Hopefully this weekend at Watkins Glen. We'll check that out. We'll be back next week to talk about it and preview Michigan. Until then, thanks everybody for listening and let's go racing. Uh-huh.